Hello everyone, it's Rio CloudSync. In today's session, we'll look at multi-tenant organizations within Microsoft 365 in conjunction with Venture ID. If you as a global administrator manage multiple organizations, you can set up multi-tenant scenarios. Multi-tenant for Microsoft 365 is in public preview for targeted release users only. What does multi-tenant or how does multi-tenant benefit me as an admin or you as an administrator? Well, it allows us to sync users between the two different te tenants, up to a maximum of five organizations, search for one another, i.e. within the use of Teams, collab on meetings, collab on files within SharePoint Online, allow the two to up to five organizations to speak to one another seamlessly. So let's get into initiating the sync between the two organizations. Scenario wise, I've got two organizations. I'm currently logged into admin at WCC Technical, which is my source organi organization. I've also got admin at WCC Service Desk, which is my destination. However, we're gonna have a dupli duplex approach in terms of one another's gonna speak to each other. So at the moment, I'm logged into admin at WCC Technical. If I hover over to the profile pane, you can see I'm logged in as admin at WCC Technical Pre-Sales. Brilliant. We can select domains. And you can see WCC technical pre .microsoft.com. Brill. We're currently on targeted release, so we've got the public preview of the Microsoft 365 uh, multi tenant. So if we select organizational settings, we select organization profile, and we can see multi tenant collaboration brackets preview. Once again, this is on targeted release. If you want to be able to opt into targeted release, you can select release preferences and you can select targeted release for everyone or targeted release for select users. With that, you sign out and sign back in and you'll have access to utilize multi-tenant collaboration. You'll have to do that on both tenancies. If I select multi-tenant collaboration, it will usually take you to a screen to configure the, the collaboration between the two organizations. All it is is one pane. I will show you by the Microsoft doc. So if you open up this doc, set up multi-tenant organization in Microsoft 365, and you can see here in the in the purple note, multi-tenant organizations in Microsoft 365 is available on targeted release only. If we scroll down, how to set up our new multi-tenant organization. Well, the first things first, we'll go to where we, we were, settings, org settings, select organizational profile. Okay, settings, org settings, organizational profile, and you'll see multi-tenant collaboration there. So we select multi-tenant collaboration and it will say get started. We select that and we create a new multi-tenant uh, multi organization. We select, then select next, we type a name. We'll call this one, we'll go into it. Call this one technical pre-sales, quite straightforward. Marries up with a dot Microsoft domain name. Give it a description if required. Enter the tenant ID of any tenants that you want to invite to this org. So that will be this destination tenant here. So I could go into my uh, destination tenant, which is this one. I can go to identity, select overview, and I can copy my tenant ID and I can pass that onto my source tenant global administrator, okay, which is this org here. I then paste that in, I select next, and I've got two options to allow users to sync into this tenant from the other tenants in the multi-tenant organization, which is one tick box, and suppress content uh, prompts for users from other tenants when they access apps and resources in my tenant, yep. As and when users access from another organization, external, I don't want them to have to approve T's and C's and uh, approve prompts which do appear. To make it a bit more seamless, we'll just tick both boxes and then we'll create multi-tenant organization. That's it for that. As I've already done it, um, due to testing purposes, I can't show you that, but it's quite straightforward. As you see, it's only 12 steps and I will link the doc in the description. We then want to go to our um, target um, organization, which will be the service desk one in this instance. So I said I've got target which is the service desk one, okay? Which is this tenant in question. We want, then want to go back to settings, org settings. Once again, I'll show you the profile, service desk, organizational profile, 
select multi-tenant collaboration. And then this is where I would uh, paste in the tenant ID my source, uh, my source tenant has provided. And then with that, give it five minutes, it will refresh and you'll see that um, both uh, tenancies have now got instances of the other tenancy within the multi-tenant collaboration pane. And you'll see, you'll see within here, the status of the mem membership that may be pending for a good five, 10 minutes. Afterwards, it will become active. Okay, you've also got a little prompt here in terms of which tenancy you're actually looking at, per se. So in this instance, I'm looking at the service desk. If I was to go into the other tenancy, I'm looking at technical pre-sales, which is my, my source tenant, my home tenant. I can see the, the outbound sync status for, 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 for both, um, for service desk, sorry, it's enabled at the moment. And there is the owner. And you'll see vice versa, service desk is owner and um, technical pre-sales is member. And with that, you've got the two associated tenant IDs. I'm logged in at the moment to admin at WCC technical pre-sales. I can see that this may be getting confused, confusing, going back and forth. However, this is just how it works and how it's configured as of, as of now, and it's in public preview. If you see there's an option to share users, so I'm in my source tenant. If I want to be able to sync users from my source tenant to my destination tenant, which is service desk, then I can select share users. My current scope is all users. I have set that previously. However, I can edit and I can either add security groups or individual users. Okay. With that, what does that do? That will sync users, all my users at this point, because I've selected all users, to my destination tenant as an external B2B user with a user type of member. Okay. With that, that will allow me to become a member to my destination directory and be able to use, uh, collaborate on all the files within the, the external organization or external directory, be able to search users seamlessly, um, be able to just collaborate and work with one another. So say for example, I've just shared the users from my source tenant and I'm waiting for the sync process to, to finalize. You'll see a little blue bar here uh, from 0% to 100% um, appear and it will sync the users just like Azure AD Connect or Enter ID Connect. Um, and there is a sync interval of 40 minutes, uh, just an FYI. Um, with that, I can go into my destination tenant. I can go to users, active users. And you'll see I have a load of um, duplicates uh, per se. So I have intra user um, with the EXT uh, UPN for external. And maybe you just filter this down via the filter method at the top uh, to just see guest users. But in essence, their user type is member. And you'll see there's loads here. Service user A, and then service user A external. Okay. And what, you, what you'll see there is just duplicate entries of the user accounts being synced over, but with the user type member, vice versa. Um, so as and when I initiate a sync from this perspective, from the destination to the source, I will see all the destination users in the source tenant. So if I was to come to the source tenant and select all users, you will see that They've all got the external field here. However, they're user type member. Therefore, all the SharePoint external uh, collaboration settings will um, take effect on these external users. Therefore, we can access files, etc. So if I'm back in the source tenant. And with that, I can open up uh, Enter ID. And funny enough, you could do everything I've just done within Microsoft 365 within Enter ID itself. Okay. However, Enter ID um, configuration requires you to do it in Enter, M365 requires you to do it in my, um, the admin console itself. However, there is a bit of uh, back and forth in terms of the cross-tenancy -ten synchronization um, sync engine, as well as the cross-tenant access settings. So if I go to the cross-tenant synchronization, you'll see in both tenancies, if I go in here and select configuration under external identities, you will see as I've initiated the sync between the two tenancies, it's actually created a sync engine called MTO Sync. 
okay? Um, and with that, you can see um, tenant name is service desk, okay? So that's my destination and destination tenant ID. And with that, I can click into the, uh, the, the sync agent and you can see I've synced across six users. They've been completed um, successfully. I can see the provision details. I can see the fixed interval of 40 minutes per every sync. Um, that's because I've set provision and state as automatic rather than manual. Um, I've got the activity ID and the job ID here as well. With that, I can provision users on demand as well. So for example, I just want to test or scope out a few users. That is recommendation, that's best practice that I can do, and I can sync that across to my destination tenancy uh, prior to uh, rolling it out fully. I can see which users and groups I have synced across as of now. Um, for this instance, it's a uh, security group with, for all users. And like I said, as in when you do create a sync engine, either through M365 or Entry ID, um, if you're doing it for M365, the provision mode will always be automatic. But if you do it for through Entry ID, you get an option for manual and automatic. But recommendation is auto always automatic as, as you want that 40 minute sync interval. We can look at which tenant ID our source um, our source tenant is looking at. In this instance, the destination one, which is a service desk one, we can test the connection and you'll get a little notification panel at the top right to say um, all successful. And that's how you know you configured it correctly. We've got the mappings here, which is the attribute mapping. Um, recommendation from attribute mapping is keep everything to default except um, the member user type. You want to click on that and you want to select apply this mapping and you want to set that to always. Why do we do that? If if you're syncing a user from the source to destination, and within the destination there's already a B2B user of that user, this will take precedence and still um, map the attribute of user type member rather than the guest attribute type for the entity which already exists uh, taking precedence over the, the user sync. So that is a, a recommendation. Um, and then with that, we've got settings and we can set up, set up email notifications to admin as and when a failure occurs, um, just like Entry ID Connect. And we can select the provision status so on and off to, to select it, yes or no. Um, we've got expression builders here, so we can set up workflows, um, custom mappings, etc. And we've got activity for order logs in terms of sync intervals. Just like if you were using um, uh, sync service uh, manager within your domain controller for Azure AD Connect. Same principle, but just UI based. Um, with that, you will see the same in the destination tenants. If I was to go to the service desk tenant and go to cross tenant synchronization, you will see the MTO agent. But for the other organization, and the tenant ID obviously differs, it's looking at um, the, the pre sales tenant rather than the um, service desk tenant. One last thing is the cross tenant access settings. So, from a service desk um, perspective, um, it will create a organizational uh, organization within the cross tenant access settings um, called um, technical pre-sales. Um, inbound and outbound will both be configured. They'll be configured um, and all you need to really worry about is the trust settings. Okay, make sure it's set to automatically redeem invitations with the tenant technical pre-sales. That's to allow the approval um, of the sync between the two organizations and cross-tenant sync allow you to sync into the, the, the destination or source tenant. Um, from the other perspective, um, if you go back to the uh, technical pre-sales organization, same principle, go to cross-tenant access settings and just make sure you've got the inbound and outbound um, and both those settings are set once more. Other than that, other than that limitations wide, like I said, a maximum of five tenants, 100,000 users per tenancy are able to be synced across um, and there is limited um, uh, compatibility with Power BI at the moment. It is coming, it's in public preview. So if you are using this for, for multi-tenant access, you may struggle with Power BI. Any other questions, please do let me know. That was just a high level overview of um, multi tenant organizations in Microsoft 365. Like I said, you can do this in Enter ID solely. Um, it's up to you. I'll link both the, the, the docs. Um, and with that, any questions, um, just let me know. Thank you.